Over the past 30 years, three skyscrapers helped define the skyline of Shanghai. The Jin Mao Tower opened in 1999, the Shanghai World Financial Center in 2008, and the most ambitious of all, the 632-meter Shanghai Tower, the second tallest building in the world, finished in 2016. The style of Shanghai Tower is kind of amazing. Welcome to Shanghai Tower. We are taking the world's fastest high-speed elevator. Its exterior is made up of over 20,000 pieces of glass, each in a different shape. So it always looks to be warping a bit differently depending on the angle you look at it from. But some say that this design is part of the reason why Shanghai Tower became a failed building. One of the world's tallest and most important skyscrapers failed. I would say that the person who said that doesn't know what they're talking about. My name is Marshall Strabler. I'm chief architect of the Shanghai Tower. Here's why the design became controversial. Shanghai Tower has faced a myriad of problems, most notably an astonishingly low occupancy rate. There were several reasons for this. The building's twisting glass facade, ideal for offsetting wind loads, created an impractical floor plate, forcing tenants to pay for large areas of unusable floor space. Before we get into the actual occupancy rate, let's take a closer look at why some might consider the design impractical. The tower has an innovative double skin design, which means that this right here, inside the triangular exterior, is the actual floor plate. The controversy was more around the rounded shape of the building, which is less efficient than a square floor plate. But the rounded shape is the only way to make the building work as it does. Is this design such a negative for Shanghai Tower? See, the triangular and round double skin is a deliberate and calculated design choice. While it sacrifices a degree of office space, it's necessary for some of the building's unique innovations. For example, thermodynamics. The extra layer makes the tower a supersized thermos bottle. And you even see the taxi drivers in Shanghai have this bottle for their tea, and it has a bottle inside the bottle, which is exactly what this building is. As a result, Shanghai Tower uses 50% less energy than average to maintain its optimum temperature. In January, when outdoor temperatures drop to around 7 degrees Celsius, the air inside can reach 14 degrees even without central heating turned on. Second, the twisting shape reduces the wind load by 24%. That's important if you are going to build something this high in a typhoon-prone area. Inspiration for this comes from the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. And the Burj Khalifa is actually a series of step terraces that form an inward vortex. And that inward spiral actually reduced wind loads. So that same spiral idea became the twisted skin of the Shanghai Tower. We try to make the building unaerodynamic. The fancy word is disorganized vortex shedding. If you picture an airplane wing that is designed to create organized vortex shedding to lift a plane in the air. If you were to take the wing and twist the wing of the airplane, it would never fly. The same thing as the Shanghai Tower, that twisted form breaks up the wind. All of this means the 632-meter skyscraper doesn't need extra materials inside to fortify it against wind, saving money and space. So we estimated it saved about 80 million US dollars in construction cost, which then paid for the second skin. And what's between the two layers of skin? They, yeah, they have trees in there. Yeah. 30% of the site has to be dedicated to green. So we're not just building what I call concrete jungles. So here comes the question. Does the design make the building impractically inefficient in terms of office space? We took this question to Strabala. So you see this rounded wall, yeah. and then the core has all the elevators, stairs, and yep. things that you need for a building. The higher we go, the bigger our columns get. Now, this core is about as efficient as you could get, because if you look at Jin Mao, uh, Jin Mao is half the size of this building, but the core is almost identical in size to the Shanghai Tower core. Mm. So the efficiency is incredibly high for this building. And yet, low occupancy rate is painfully obvious at night, when half the tower fails to light up. Pause right here. Most of these are not, in fact, office spaces, but a luxury hotel that will soon open. This 
左右吧。Until as recently as 2018, the building was half empty. But that was 2018. What about today? 目前呢，我们已经要入住了百分之七十以上，和我们原来的预期应该是差不多。Concerns over the tower's finances are unsurprising. Because its investors, led by the municipal government, spent huge money on sustainability technologies, from wind power turbines to a rain recycling system. While these are expensive to build, their cost-saving effects might only be seen in the long term. As a green building, its investment will definitely increase. But its investment in operation, after it can reduce by 20% its energy consumption, is a very significant investment in the long term. So that's a difference between planning in America and planning in China. China is one of the few countries that is really pushing sustainability. It's because they can push it. Whereas in the West, in America, 90% of the buildings are done by private developers. So they want to make the most profit for the least amount of investment. This building could not have been built in the U.S. because its payback period is about 12 years, whereas most developers want a five-year payback. Four years into operation, has Shanghai Tower failed? It's probably too soon to say.